All righty. Welcome back. Another day in the life. Another episode, C-Suite Unfiltered. Uh, let's just jump right into it. Blue Collar Summit. Yeah. So you announced this. Uh, we had a round table at the time of recording last night yeah. for the owners inside of Augusta. So if you want, you know, up to date, sneak peek, access to Mike and all the updates, uh, join Augusta. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we had a round table where you rolled out, obviously, some internal stuff for Augusta that we will not be talking about publicly and some cool ideas and where we're headed. But you also officially announced the dates for Blue Collar Summit, launched the website. So, yeah, pumped about that. Yeah, so it'll be the first time we go outside of lawn care landscaping. Yeah. Um, and the notion behind that is mostly around the fact that I think sometimes other industries bring other ideas that are, like, adjacent to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But, like, oh, like we're like, oh, we didn't think about that. And I think, like, if I would have done that years ago, we would have come up, like, if I would have been going to, you know, roofing conferences uh, 10 years ago, I would have... Uh, probably figure out things like estimate videos years before I did mm -hmm. um, and, and other little systems we've added because other industries did them or did something slightly different mm -hmm. and then you get ideas because ultimately we all sell labor we all right. take a $20, $30 per hour labor and we try to sell it for 100 to $200 per hour to the customer and like that that difference of like whether I'm installing uh, shingles on a roof or I'm installing molts into someone's flower beds, it's kind of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think it'll be like a good creative way of getting other ideas flowing from different industries. And so like the speakers uh, that we currently have lined up or like we're working on are like roofing, cleaning. There's like a bunch of different industries. Um, still a lot of lawn care landscaping. It's still going to be the bulk of people being there just because I've, I've always been, you know, it's always been Landscape Summit. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, so it is January 16th to the 18th, yep. correct, 2024. Yep. There'll be the first night of just some keynotes, and then the second day you were doing a workshop. So mm -hmm. is that just you all day? All day, I'll be doing the workshop. Cool. Um, it's kind of something I've been working on, like contributing to for the, the, really the past five years. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be kind of a culmination of some of the work. Um, I haven't like put everything together yet, yeah. but like it's like, a workshop in my brain still. I'm also trying to you got finish eight months. Well, I'm also trying to finish the book. I'm also trying to create this winter track stuff for yep. Augusta. And then I then I'll be focused on the workshop. That's kind of like the sequence of this next year yeah. in terms of creating content. And so um yeah, we're not going to any phones, no pictures of slides, no recordings whatsoever. Um and I want people to lock in and really focus cool. and take notes. And will there uh, be like a workbook to work yeah, along oh yeah, with you? Be a like workbook, spreadsheets yeah. and things, yep. QR codes. Yep. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's sweet. Is it, do you have like, give us a little teaser. What is it uh, going to focus on? Or is it because it's a whole day workshop? Is it going to go all over the place? Um, or I'll gonna, save it for then. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you were going to like drill down on like it's called it's, it's called an expansion workshop. Okay. Um, and if you look at the definition of expansion, and if you look at like the what expansion means in terms of mechanics, uh, like certain types of bridges, like things like that, like from an engineering perspective, there's different ways to expand things. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, I believe that every business needs to be engineered slightly differently uh, and optimized for whatever the end result is. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, whether you are trying to license a model, franchise a model, uh, multiple locations, uh, one massive location, like it needs to be engineered, like engineering your business mm -hmm. in a specific way, and having like the blueprint for that is like going to be kind of the goal. Yeah, from an from an engineering perspective, the increase in volume of a material as its temperature is increased, right. And so, um, and that, that's from a temperature perspective, then you have a material right, expansion. Right. And so anyways, we're going to be trying to create the blueprint for someone's business for like the next five years based upon what expansionary channel they're going to use. And, uh, that's going to be the goal. Nice. I love it. So first night keynotes, second night, all day workshop, Mike Andy's third day guest speakers. Yeah, so Sweet. first night and the second day is a bunch of guest speakers. We're doing things in the morning. They're going to be optional on Friday morning and Saturday morning. So I can talk a little more about those, and that's like there's going to be some breakout sessions for whether it be people like super athletic and they want to go running together. Uh, there's going to be ones for like like kind of Bible study type mm -hmm. situations uh, for the mornings, and then there's going to be uh, ones that are based on revenue. So if you have a bigger business, like if you're a million plus, you you will literally have to show us your P&L in order to get into the room. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that's going to be cool. And uh, we might even do like one based on age. So like if you're under 20, like you can go into other things. So um, it'll be cool. Breakout sessions from like early morning to like right before mm -hmm. we start. So if someone really wants to get everything out of the event, they could literally go like 12 hours of, of straight content. Uh, and then if they, they're not really able mm -hmm. to do that or they don't want to do that, they could just come to the main sessions mm -hmm. and uh, take it a little easier. Yeah, that's cool. We're going to pack it in for sure. I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah. It's going to be good. And, you, and you've said publicly you're going to put 10 times more effort into this one than any other conference? I probably already put as much effort into this one 
<laughs> as I did last year, and we're still what eight nine, months mo- eight nine months. Yeah. So um, last year, I, I I got Dr. Cashy kind of like on my on my team. Yeah. Um, only about two months before conference, and so that's when I like I woke up to the fact of like how much more effort should be put into things, and so this time now I'll be going into it with like basically from two months now about eight months of you getting ready for it and um, it won't be keynotes. Keynotes are different. Cause like I, you can put me on a stage, give me a topic and I can basically talk for at least 10 or 15 minutes about yeah. it. No problem. Throw a couple questions in there. Like we got ourselves a keynote baby. Yeah. <laughs> when you're talking about a workshop, like you need to have structure and yep. plan and like paste it all out and rehearsed it. And so uh, being around people like Dr. Cash and Alex, where like there is no level of preparation that is too great. And um, even what they're doing, like as we speak, I, I kind of know a little bit behind the scenes, like the stuff that they're doing, like they're locked down in mo- monk mode, yeah. um, working on the book launch uh, and every, it's going to become a shock to everyone. It's going to be, it's going to break records and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's because they've literally locked themselves in rooms and like work seven days a week on this. Yeah. And the amount of like rehearsing and doing it over and over and just rep, 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 rep. Uh, you don't have to be the smartest person in the world. If you just do the same thing a thousand times and then you get on stage and it's like, wow, they crushed it. Yeah. Like, well, actually they basically <laughs> dream about it because it's like all they do. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that level of preparation just is intense. It's, it's, it's a lot of work, dude. Like I, there's a lot of things I got to get done. Yeah. And so like, I really wish I just could work, focus on the workshop, but like the book needs to get done. Yeah. And like, I've been working a ton on that and then <laughs> bless you. And then the, uh, you know, the, the winter tracks, like for Augusta, mm-hmm. like that's a big deal. I got to yep. nail that down, uh, at least get the testing frameworks for this coming winter yep. and then refine it next year. But, uh, I also want to make this workshop like the best thing. Like, I want people to blow, like, I want people like at the end of Friday just to be like, like I've seen my business from a whole different perspective. Cool. I have clarity on the next five years. I know exactly how, what I need to do to make it happen. And like, these are the steps I will be taking at every single junction of the expansionary effort. Yep. And uh, that's going to be the goal. That's awesome. I love it. Well, there is one thing that we shared last night or you shared on the round table with the guest owners that you were, you were okay releasing to the C-suite audience. Yeah. So this is C-suite this is, exclusive, this dude. Is, yeah. If you're not in Augusta, this is the only place you're going to hear about this for at least several weeks. Yeah. May, maybe I'll edit the pod. Maybe I'll put this <laughs> at the beginning, but this is, yes, this is exclusive to the C-suite audience. So thank you, Mike. You have, Oh, by the way, Liz, the other day, she's like, you got a thousand subscribers. Yeah. She's like, you know what? The only reason you did that, right? I, I, you got to a thousand i'm like because she's at like 300 or something yeah. i'm like why she's like because you're on it every single week yeah <laughs> of course so i'm like okay well you can interview me go for yeah. it yeah 100 percent. i am i am one thousand percent aware of that. i look forward to the moment when um when you know we'll probably you know my main channel probably like two or three million subs but then both of you have like 10 20 30 thousand mm-hmm. and like there's a real following of like executives and like number twos yeah um and sales people yeah. um that are actually following you all and kind of like uh a lot of people follow layla because like she's the nuts and bolts mm-hmm. like the brains behind the operation of like someone who's really good at promotion yeah. like alex um and they follow her like i i look forward to that yeah so that'll be cool um so this is C-Suite exclusive. exclusive. You're working on yes. something. Yes. Showcase reviews. Yeah, yeah. So tell us what this is. So this stemmed from, at Long Care Web Design, it costs 500 bucks a month, basically, to, for us to build your site. Um, we don't think that anyone should really take that much money and put it towards your website unless you're doing over 200000 in annual revenue. And we probably get 50 to 70% of our leads that come into Long Care Web Design um, that are not doing that much revenue. Mm-hmm. And... So we actually tell them not to buy from us. And all we tell them to do is like, watch these five videos Mike has made and mm-hmm. get a g- bunch of Google reviews. And still we don't see people do that. Mm-hmm. So we we want to create, it's like, look, we know getting Google reviews and getting like Yelp reviews and Home Advisor reviews and all these other platforms is the number one way to get um, leads when mm-hmm. you don't have a ton of money to spend on marketing. Because like it costs you nothing. Mm -hmm. to get the reviews and you can go out and do work. And instead of getting payment in the form of cash, you can get in the form of reviews, referrals, upsells. And so, um, I just always see like when someone goes and does what we say, they're they're doing a hundred thousand, 150,000. We say, Hey, take another year. We'll build your site in a year, but like, go get like a hundred reviews. They go get a hundred reviews. They come back to this next year, they're 300,000. And like, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. And then we build them the site and takes them to the next stratosphere. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so really it comes out of a, like, we wanted to like actually give them a tool to get the reviews. Mm -hmm. So showcase reviews, as the name implies, you're trying to showcase your reviews on social media. You're trying to keep track of all of your reviews from all different platforms in one spot. You're also trying to be able to send review links, QR codes, text messages, WhatsApp messages, emails to people asking for reviews, but then screening out anyone that's not going to post a five star. Mm -hmm. And then getting all the negative feedback channeled to you, everything that is positive gets put onto the main, onto your main socials. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a whole bunch of automations we're trying to build around it. So you can already tie it in with like your Stripe account, for example. Ooh, cool. What's cool about it too is what's kind of different right now. Like the, I'd say the unique differentiator right now is we can actually track who left a review. Mm -hmm. And so if someone doesn't leave a review, we can keep following up with them. Uh, the problem we've always had in the past with other CRMs and even Copilot is you can keep sending someone a review thing, but you don't know if they actually left the review. Mm -hmm. You don't know that. Right. And so um, we're tracking that part. So that way, if someone doesn't leave her, you follow up with them and mm -hmm. you can send them multiple text messages or emails or mm -hmm. WhatsApp messages. Uh, and you can tie it into like with your Stripe account to where based upon when they check out, like or they get added as a new customer, then they start getting the sequence. Um, so anyways, all that to say, it's really a matter of getting more online reviews. It's a way to be able to keep it all in one spot, be able to have a QR code and share that with people, mm -hmm. knowing that if someone scans it and they're mad, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So you could put it on your truck and not get people that to scan it and put a one star review on. It actually filters all those out, mm -hmm. gets all the information to you personally, and then lets all the, stuff, the, the good stuff go public. Okay. So showcasing the reviews allows you to really easily uh, show it on all your social medias, like positive reviews, stuff like that. And that, that's like where it's at right now. And then uh, we're working on several other things that are going to make it really cool. Like we're going to eventually connect with Copilot and make it like really cool. Okay. Awesome. So how does it work? It's not necessarily like a customer facing link that they're going to see your showcase review profile they're just going to see a google review link or a facebook review link explain how that part works so you'll be able to customize like which platforms you're trying to drive reviews towards mm -hmm. and then you can have your main link that you could just send to someone like hey could you leave us a review they're like they're awesome five stars they're like fantastic please put these on these channels and then they'd be able to put them in there mm -hmm. and then if it's not five stars it'd just be like hey Thank you for your feedback. And the feedback would just come into you internally. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to weed those people out. And then the QR code, you can just be more public with it, mm -hmm. knowing that if it is a one star or two star, because someone's just mad at you, it won't actually get to the public side of things. Gotcha. So I type in a positive review. I click five stars. Then I also have to click post to Google. No, it's initially going it? to be the five star thing. So it's like, you know, what was your experience like? Five stars. Boom. All right. Google. Put, put it into Google here. Put it into Yelp here. Put it into Facebook. Got it. Look here. Yep. Whatever you've connected on the back end. Cool. And then if it's less than five stars, like, thank you for your feedback. Please give us all the really horrible things that we did to you. Mm -hmm. And then that would come internally. So the only thing that's customer facing is the link. And then everything else is internal for the business owner to be able to manage their reviews and know where they're coming from. Yeah, basically. depending, like, you can also connect a lot of different integrations. So, like, you can connect it with WhatsApp business account. You can connect with your texting and your email stuff and, like, do a bunch of automations. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, like, the link, yes. That is, like, the differentiator right now. And then the fact that we actually know if they left a review. And then you can follow up based upon whether or not they actually click the link and follow through. So, for example, if you're trying to get 50 reviews and from friends and family... You send out the link, you hope they do it, and if they don't, it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to keep harassing them. Mm -hmm. You could just set up automations. Got it. To until they leave a review, yeah. <laughs> you do just keep like reminding them. Yeah. Um, so that's the type of thing that it, we're working on. And then will those reviews automatically update on anyone's Augusta website where the reviews show up? Yeah. So we create, we have like five <clears throat> different ways of presenting the widget of your reviews, whether it be mm -hmm. like a scroll banner, uh, you can do videos, you can do like a widget, like where it's like more of a button. So however you want to present them on your social media or on your website you can do that so yeah <coughs> for Augusta it's free mm -hmm. um and then for the public it's 99 bucks a month okay so our goal is like to be able to use the 99 dollar price point it's enough for us to be able to like maintain the site keep adding to features etc and adding the automations and then um the goal is eventually to have a, a, a well-built website so mm -hmm. this is like ideal for someone doing under 200,000 in annual revenue. Mm -hmm. I think it's necessary and worth the dollar amount if you have a bigger business, especially if you've like, this is like probably Augustus Achilles is like a lot of us have a ton of Google reviews, but we don't push them anywhere else. Mm -hmm. There is fringe benefits in all these other areas to have a bunch of Google, uh, Yelp reviews, Home Advisor, you know, there's Facebook. a gazillion of them. So we have like 40 different channels that you can connect to. Mm -hmm. And then what you can do is like only send the reviews for those other platforms once someone's already sent a Google right. review. So once someone's got a Google review for us, it's kind of like game over. 
Yeah. We don't have a whole bunch of automation around all the other platforms and connecting them all, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So now you could still send them reviews and they could end up giving you four or five reviews across different platforms. Right. So that's kind of the goal. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So what would you say is kind of the, the main purpose for this, the reasoning behind it. Obviously you've put time and resources into building this does $99 a month does not seem like a money grab by any means. It's free to Augusta. So you're not charging the owners inside of Augusta any extra. What is the reasoning behind this product? Uh, I see a lot of people building really, really good websites and then not put like having a great car and no fuel. Mm. And to me, it's like the car is great. The website is great, but you're not, you have no fuel. And that is like reviews and like great credibility from your Google listing. And so we kind of are just sort of really trying to push the fact that like that is so important to actually making your website perform well. And so if we can get people to get a bunch of Google reviews and then we build them their website, we just see like log, like, like massive exponential return if they have a whole bunch of reviews behind the great website. Okay. Got it. So. Cool. That's awesome. And uh, when will that be made public slash how can people get on the wait list? Oh yeah. So for, <laughs> so for, for people watching C-Suite Unfiltered, they can go to the site now. Um, and get on the wait list. But you're probably three to six months if you're okay. watching just C-Suite um, yeah. from getting on. Because we're what we what I learned from Copilot is like not to launch things and sell them and let droves of people join. So, because it breaks everything in code. <laughs> so that was my bad. Um, so what we're doing right now is over the next couple months, uh, probably th two to three months, we're slowly going to be trickling in Augusta and a couple, like one or two a day. And then we will then get to the waiting list that's public. So if you're watching this and you're not in Augusta and we have a different way for them to, so if you're watching this in Augusta, don't go to the regular page and sign yes. up. We have a different <laughs> page. You just need to watch the round table. If, you, um, if you're public though, go to there, fill out the waiting list form. And then you're probably three to six months from actually being able to be inside of it. And it's um, by three to six months, like the features that we currently have our homepage, There'll be way more. Cool. Like we, we we're, we're simultaneously still building the automation side of things. Mm -hmm. We, my goal is like get it to a certain point where I think it's worth 99 bucks a month. And I think it's valuable. Let's get that out. Um, but then we still have the development team working on stuff in terms of automations. Okay. And what's the website? Oh, showcasereviews.com. Okay, perfect. Just want to make sure we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure we're clear. All right. Very cool. Well, we're going to drastically switch okay. from reviews to advertising. Advertising. Okay. Yes. So I, uh, I took this uh, screenshot here the other day. I'll put it up on the screen for everyone to see. thought it was very interesting. And we were kind of talking about um, leaning into the humor side of things. Um, was that around the Planet Fitness bathroom situation? Oh, that yeah. The make it funny, kind of, like just lean into it over, over aggressively. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, there's one bathroom. I don't care who's in it as long as it's one person. Do whatever you want right, there, right, basically. Right. Well, I, I saw this ad the other day on Facebook. I'll put it up, but I'll let you see it. Cows died for this. Oh, dude, that's sick. I love that. Unlike you, leather only gets better with age. That's funny. Dude, that's pretty sick. How much does this cost? I don't know. Oh, so you want one? <laughs> well, the thing about with, 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 are you going to put this on the screen? Yeah, I'll, I'll show it on the screen for everybody. The thing about, um, my, my, like, uh, cases for, for laptops yeah. is I want it as thin as possible. Yeah. And I don't like bulky at all. Yeah. And like, I think it's hilarious that people like get really, really thin phones, really, yeah. really thin laptops, and then put these massive clunky Chunky cases. cases. Oh yeah, on oh them. yeah. And so I've always been a proponent of like either like clear or like translucent, thin everything, and it served well. Like this, this sort of thing is like it's thinner. Like yours is thin too. Yeah, like, I, got I don't a want a big, one. bulky like those big uh, squared off. Uh, off otter, otter, boxes. otter boxes. Otter boxes. Like, dude, you're holding up a cardboard box yeah. here. Like, anyways. <laughs> So what, what's, what's the uh, theme here? Well, I just thought this was an interesting article, or, or not an article, excuse me. I just thought it was an interesting advertisement because right. they lean fully into the, yes, this is real leather, and we killed cows to make you a laptop cover. Yeah. So you're instantly going to oh, yeah. polarize the audience. Yeah. I just thought from an advertising perspective, uh, just a unique take. Hook, yeah. Like that we are literally saying cows died for this, made from 100% real dead cows. Yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Versus saying like, oh, and then in the like ad words, it does say 100% authentic leather, mm -hmm. but it doesn't lead with that. Yeah. It leads with cows died for this. So I don't know what your thoughts were on that in terms of, you know, like leaning fully into that. Do you think that's 
a good idea for brands. Like at this point, you're going to find with, with technology, there will always be someone that sees your product that hates it, that hates the way you talk about it, the way you present it, the way you say it. Even on, uh, we did some selfie videos to test some ads at your local Bellingham shop. And it's me and the general manager like smiling, saying like, hey, we work at Augusta. And like someone literally put like garbage as a comment. <laughs> and I'm like, we're just saying hi. Like we, di we didn't, yeah. Anyways, so like you'll always find people that hate whatever you're putting out online. Um, what are your thoughts on that specifically? Like them going 110% in one direction. Yeah, so like 80% of people will see that and not like the fact that they are killing cows. Yeah. And they will say um, some horrible thing about how they're being crass or whatever. Yeah. Um, this is actually something that we talked about a little bit with Augusta last night. And that mm -hmm. was like going after the blue ocean. Mm -hmm. No one else that makes, there's a gazillion leather cases for your laptop. But there's only one brand that's willing to say we kill cows. <laughs> and you are literally going to have the hide of a dead cow, probably a newborn calf yeah. on your laptop. <laughs> um, and so going after the blue ocean is the, the, the segment of the audience that is a minority, but no one's going after. Mm. And I'd rather go after 20% of the audience that no one's going after than 80% of the audience that we have 100 or 200 com competitors. Because just from a statistical standpoint, if I get 20% of a market, it's barely going to go up to 80% that's divided up by 100. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is something like the reason for Augusta is like, we are trying to lean into the fact that we are a national brand. We are big. You get AI to answer the phone. You get instant quotes. You have cards on file. You have automations. Like we are not the small little guy that comes and mows your grass. Will that, will that push away the majority of the audience? Yes. But the other minority has nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. And there is a minority of customers that prefer not to talk to a human, that want a card on file and never want to see mm -hmm. your face again. They just want to click one button and have you get an estimate and put it on the schedule. And so like, we want to go after the blue ocean, which no one else can have because they're not Augusta. Mm -hmm. And so that's very difficult because you're going to get a lot of no's and people saying garbage because that, that's 60, 70, 80% of the audience. And that's why everyone tries to blend to go after the 80%. Like, mm -hmm. well, that makes the most sense. I should go after the majority of the audience. We have everyone else is fishing over there. Mm -hmm. Go after the blue ocean where no one's fishing mm -hmm. and you get a bigger chunk of this small little thing. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that was my rant and I kind of diverged it from <laughs> cows over to lawn care. Bring us back. Well, I, I don't, I don't know how to bring <laughs> us back after that. I thought that was fantastic, <sighs> but I do think that, you know, you can't serve everybody. Right. right. It's, it's a barbecue restaurant. Shouldn't try to serve vegans. <laughs> it's just, it would just be stupid. Yeah, right. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. So you just, have, I think what people need to do is not only be authentic to themselves, but to what they're trying to do Yeah. and hand up. Most of us in the home service would prefer a customer that never contacts you. Mm. We'd all prefer it. Put your card on file and never contact me. If you're recurring services. Yeah, yeah. if you're recurring services, never contact me unless there's a problem. And if mm. there's a problem, I will deal with it. I want to hear about that. I want to make sure I'm serving you well. But other than that, those are the, your best customers. Mm. I'd, I'd have a hard time uh, someone convincing me that they are not the best customers. Yeah, and I believe going after the minority audience that is not heard and doesn't see things like you kill the cow to get this mm -hmm. drives your customer acquisition cost down. Mm -hmm. Because the other... Other 99% of advertisements around cases don't look like that. Right. And they're going after the 80% of people that don't want the cows to die. Yeah. And they think that's, a, that's crass. Go after the 20%. No one's advertising to them. They're going to stop scrolling. Your customer action cost will be lower. You will have a, a, a much better hook. And I think that's obviously why they're saying yeah, that. Yeah, and I like that too. And, and part of the reason that ad is grabby, every time you see a case ad, it's going to talk about shatterproof, shock resistant, drop resistant. Yeah. This says nothing about no, it. No, we kill cows, nothing. baby. And this is the product description on their website. So I did find it. $70 for this case if you'd want to get one. Yeah. Um, it says full grain tan leather. Cows died for this. 100% authentic, uncorrected, full grain, vegetable tanned leather. No texture stamping or chemical treatment. Over time, scuffs, natural oils, daily wear and tear combined to form a timeless patina. Unlike you, this leather will only get better with age. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bessie. <laughs> so, That's like, awesome. they don't, they don't, they, again, they don't say anything about that it's shockproof, that yeah. it's going to prevent scratches on your computer, that it's going to keep your screen safe. It's just like, this is real leather yeah. and it's cool and you want it. Yeah, it'd be like, it'd be like, <laughs> the way to do this for Augusta, I'm just trying to like bring this to, to Augusta because, like, that's what we talk about. Yeah. This yeah, of course. Is like, I think it'd be a good move to, to advertise, like, AI is taking over. And it's taking over lawn care. And we, you will call us now, and you're not going to talk to a human, baby. Yeah. You're going to go to our website, 
we'll do the whole checkout process. You'll never talk to a human. AI is taking over. Yeah. And like then have like, I think down the road, it'll come like, when you come to the website, it'll be like Max like pops up as like an assistant and being like, all right, I'm going to come mow your grass. We have no humans involved here. We're this massive company. <laughs> We're going to be able to do this cheaper than anyone else. Um, and like leaning into it. Yeah. And yes, 80% of people, that's horrible. AI is taking over jobs and blah, 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 blah. Okay. The other 20% is like, finally, I don't have to talk to Billy Bob Jr. in his sweaty <laughs> overalls. I can just get the a click a couple buttons and the lawn gets cut. Yeah. We got all sorts of action happening. <laughs> Welcome to my world, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. I completely agree with that. I, I just think... I think it's interesting when brands lean into that. Now, from a franchise perspective, though, you obviously have the owners. What does that look like, if you're willing to answer this question, when you see the blue ocean and you think it's clear, mm -hmm. but then you do have an owner that is maybe just getting started. Maybe it is just one, uh, them and one employee. Yeah. And maybe they know every single customer by heart. They know their name, their address, their email, and like they treat them very well, and, and the customers love them. What would you say to those people? Because they're going to be diametrically opposed to that position. Yeah, because the, the challenging part is if you go after the red ocean where the 80% of people are mm. and everyone is fishing and mm. all 100 of your competitors are there, the, co the customer will never complain about your service and the way that you're trying to go out, you're trying to market them. Why? Because that's all there is. Mm -hmm. And so you never even hear from the 20% because they don't even know the option exists. There is no other large, massive provider. There is no national brand that's using AI to get their grass cut. Mm -hmm. Like no one's doing that. So they're not going to complain. They're just going to keep cycling through vendors trying to find someone that mm -hmm. will just come and do things at a click of a button, that will have automations, have a card on file. Like, they're just looking for that all the time. Mm -hmm. And so the challenging part is when you're going after Blue Ocean, you are going to have people complain because they expect, based upon previous experiences, a different type of, of service. Mm -hmm. They expect the homegrown mom-and-pop shop. And they are going to complain when they call in, they have to talk to Max. Mm -hmm. So the challenging part when you go after a blue ocean is you're going to have the red ocean people complaining. Mm -hmm. When you go after the red ocean, the blue ocean doesn't even know that what they are looking for exists. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very long-term mindset to say, I am going to withstand the majority of people not liking my service because I'm going after a minority part of the audience that no one else can serve and is higher value. Mm -hmm. um, and so the challenging part is like, I know that like, strategically what we're doing. I also know that it's very difficult as an owner to have five leads come in when you're brand new and two of them complain because they are part of the red ocean. They are the person that wants the home town mom mm -hmm. and pop shop. And that's really, really difficult when you're first getting started. Mm -hmm. So there's like the balance. Um, that's why like we haven't gone full out like AI is taking yeah, over and yeah. like, this is how we're <laughs> going to do things. But like I have pretty good data and we're going to keep testing it this year of like what happens when I market the fact that you're going to talk to an AI assistant for 20, 24-7 on your phone, you know, instant pricing versus like locally owned and operated type operation. Mm -hmm. Everyone can say that. Right. Every single one of your competitors can say locally owned and operated. So why are we advertising that way? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I need to blend in. Okay, blend into the red ocean. Like that is the 80% right. of people that you can serve that 100 people are serving. Go after the 20% that no one else can compete on. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, like a weird frame because you will get more people complaining. Mm -hmm. And so I know, I'm just like, it's just difficult. Cause like, I know where like long-term this goes, but then the short-term people got to pay their bills and owners, I need to make sure they're successful in the short term. And, um, so there's like the balance and, um, that's why we try to make it as optional as possible. Mm -hmm. There are people that understand and believe in what we're doing long-term with AI. And there's like, I think 20 or 30 owners or whatever that have opted out of max during office hours. Cause like, they're like, Hey, we're not ready for it yet. That's fine. Yeah, totally like, fine. My goal is to try to make it as optional as possible, but I just know there's no shadow of doubt in my mind that long term, like we will be fishing in a blue ocean. We will have people complaining. And you look at the biggest, biggest businesses, look how many people are complaining online. It's simply a matter of scope and size. And when you're serving a hundred times the audience, you're gonna have a hundred times as many online or negative things. People say horrible things about true green. All this. Yeah, it's true. Whatever. Great. They're serving $2 billion worth of revenue. Yeah. Like they're going to have complaints. And so 
if you serve a blue ocean, you're going to have a majority of people complaining because they don't actually fit in with your service. However, you have created a moat around a, an audience that no one else can serve. Mm -hmm. And there's a segment of the audience in, in the population, in my opinion, especially as people have more money, that do not want to talk to people. They do not want to have to talk to, like meet you every time you come to the property and go over things. They want everything automated. They want everything digital. They want to be able to take videos and just submit it and you take care of it. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the price. They want a card on file. Um, I believe there's a segment of the audience that's there that no one else can serve because they don't have a thousand locations behind them. And the goal in getting Augusta to a thousand locations is to be able to say to a prospective customer, we have a thousand people, like a thousand businesses. And if you have a problem with me, you can go to the co corporate and get me in trouble. Mm -hmm. And there, I know there's value to that because I, when I go to service providers as, um, I have become, you know, more net worth, whatever. Like I look for that because I see security in that. Mm -hmm. And I'm a high value customer because I will pay twice as much. Just don't talk to me. Don't mm -hmm. take my time. And I want just like, just, just if you think, see something needs to get done, just do it and charge me. I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, just send me an automated text reminder. Yeah. And so I believe there's an audience. I think that it's very difficult to switch people's mindset from going away from like 80% of the people, like 80% of the people that want you to mow their grass you will not be the perfect fit for them. Mm -hmm. But there's a 20% of the market that is starving for something that no one else is providing. And that's the blue ocean. So like I recommend everyone watch a video or uh, watching a video, uh, reading a book called Blue Ocean Strategy. Yep. Little book, you can read in like an hour. Um, I read it in my MBA course. It was written like 10, 15 years ago mm -hmm. and it explains what Blue Ocean Strategy is and it's fantastic. And no, it's interesting that you bring it up though because some of those points, like the locally owned and operated, that's actually something I recently was frustrated by is when people say it's a family owned business. Mm -hmm. Well, why can't you say Augusta is a family run franchise? Well, it is. You it, are your family. It, well, like, even like right now on the website, we say locally owned and operated. Right. Every business in the world is locally owned yeah. and operated. Every business, unless it's owned by VC, is family owned even for the most part. Even if it's owned by VC, the v because the VCs <laughs> have partners yeah. that are throughout the whole world and there's probably someone locally. So like every yeah. business can say locally owned and operated. It makes us feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah. But there's a segment of the audience that is like, I don't care. I yeah. want my lawn mowed and I want it done tomorrow. And I don't want any sort of friction between my problem and the solution. Mm -hmm. And that that audience doesn't know what exists. So they're not going to complain and they're not going to call in to any provider and be like, why are you not answering your phone 24 mm seven? -hmm. Why is there not an AI assistant to help me walk through this? So I don't have to, I don't have to get your voicemail all the time. They're not going to say that, right? but they have the need. And so you got to, for us, we have to balance the fact that like, we know where that's going. We know the trend. We know we're on the right side of history, but like people need to pay their bills. And I also know that owners will not be happy if 30, 40% of their customers decline because of like, they're the, the traditional customer. Mm -hmm. um, but I just believe that our customer acquisition cost goes way down when we target an audience like this company does that is a smaller audience, but is going to react much better to the hooks of like, AI is going to mow your grass. Mm -hmm. If you did that, like I, I'd be really interested to see if someone like made an ad, like, AI is going to mow your grass. We will, you will never talk to a human being. AI is taking over the world, including lawn care. Like, I believe there's an audience, and you're getting yeah. so much negative comments and people saying it's stealing jobs, and this is a horrible thing. And then there's going to be people like me being like, finally, this is what I've been looking yeah. for. And so anyways. Yeah, no, I love it. I think it's good. Yeah, it, it does create an interesting dynamic when then, you know, real people actually show up to the property and then you're incentivizing your team to, you know, make a connection with the customer or get a Google review. But I think there there is that subset. There are people that just want to be hands off. Like, put my card on file. I don't even care what it is. I won't even look at the bill. Here's the card for bills. Like, just It's okay. Have it. showcase reviews, send them a text message, and they click on the link and they leave a review. Yeah. They don't need to talk to the customer. Yeah. No, it's good. I like it. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, let's take a, uh, a dynamic shift here. and i know that that's controversial yeah. and i know that like we i i i have to like walk the fine line of short-term profitability and unit metrics for the owners which is like my biggest focus on winter right now mm -hmm. and I, I said it last night like someone asked like why is that such a big deal i said look we can all talk about in increasing the efficiency of nine months a year by 10 percent mm -hmm. great Let's look at this. So nine, if you take, take a percent increase because like we increase marketing and advertising and all this stuff, we make operational systems and blah, blah, blah. 10% better, fantastic. For nine months a year, let's just call it 10 times nine, 90% increase. Let's just call it that just mm -hmm. for the sake of numbers. Yep. But if I can take three months of the year, where right now you're doing like 
five, like $10,000 in revenue. Mm -hmm. And it's 10% of what you currently, you, you usually do like a hundred thousand a month. And all of a sudden you're down to 10 grand during the winter. If I can take it from 10 grand and put it up to 70 grand, that's a 60% increase, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, if, like, I'm sorry. No, that'd be like a 600% yeah, increase, say. right? <laughs> but like, if I can do that times it by three, you get way better return. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely believe that like in home services, everyone, if they could just take out one quarter of financials and improve them, it'd be the, that one quarter in the winter. Yep. And if they can improve that, the unit economics of the whole year, like the business would look impregnable because mm -hmm. impregnable, is that right word? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was getting mixed up with a different word. No, you're good. Like it'd be impregnable because, um, the unit economics for three quarters of the year for most home services is really good. Like most of the time we're like 20 to 25% profitable for mm -hmm. three quarters of the year. Mm -hmm. The one quarter, most of us are negative 10 to 20% mm -hmm. or even more. And mm -hmm. it drags the unit economics down to where our average across like home services is around 10% profitability, which stinks. Um, so that's why like I'm so focused on that. That is like short term going to uh, like boost like satisfaction and like owner unit economics and mm -hmm. money the fastest, but long term fish in a different ocean fish after the people that do not want the other hundred competitors in your mm -hmm. market. Cause you offer something no one else can and no one else can say they have a thousand locations behind them. And it's like all I'm focused on right now yeah. is like, that needs to be our USP unique selling proposition because no one else can compete with it. Everyone else can compete on locality quality, a lot of other things. They can't say they have a thousand locations. Mm -hmm. They can't say they answer their phone 24 mm seven. -hmm. Like do what others can't and realize that by doing that, you're going to alienate some of the audience that likes cows. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, that was my okay. rant. No, I like it. Just, we'll just sit with that first. <laughs> ruminate. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to ruminate. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. I get it. Um, you sold me. I have, no, I have nothing to say back to that. So we'll take a <laughs> drastic shift, like I was saying. <laughs> We're going to the Washington Post here. Okay. Don't worry, Lee's not getting political. <laughs> all right. It, this is on economics, not politics. All right. For all the people that downvoted the politics yes. section of the C Suite Unfiltered. Just, yeah. Um, did, I don't know if you saw on your, your video you did on your main channel that I'm taking a step back. Nice clickbait. I didn't. Uh, I commented from the C-suite. Oh account. yeah, I didn't see that. I yeah. said, man, would love to see this guy on a full-length podcast <laughs> yeah, or something. Your, and uh, someone said maybe they could talk a little politics. <laughs> and then someone responded, or not. <laughs> so thank you guys. That gave me a good laugh. Um, all right. So this is the headline article here: is inflation has fallen. Why are grocery stores still so expensive? Inflation hasn't fallen. What are they smoking? Well, you know. Still I, double well, the average. Well, no, the percentage at which it is inflating has fallen. Yeah, but it's still inflating as we speak. Yeah, but the last the three percentage. months, CPI has gone up. <laughs> yes. We, <laughs> like, financial system, yeah, we're in a bad spot. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is an article that basically, uh, the, the, the tagline of it, I won't read the whole thing, but pretty much all groceries are at anywhere between a uh, 50 to 450% increase um, since 2022. So this is like a two year span. So this is even like midway through COVID, we're 50 to 450% up on groceries on average. That's quite the scale. Yeah. Four, 50 to 450. Yeah. Can we just get an average? Well, let's see here. Because <laughs> I, I would yeah. say CPI, they'd probably say something, of course, you have gone up like 20 or 30%. Let's see here. I would imagine this is like categorical. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here on average, grocery store prices have jumped 25% over the past four years. Nailed it! Outpacing overall inflation of 19% 19. during the same period. Yeah. Um, this includes prices like appliances, smartphones, and other goods, but groceries are slightly more expensive than previous years with particularly sharp jumps for beef, sugar, juice, and other items. Quality. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then uh, this article also talks about gas prices. It says that it's more than a 50% um, increase. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on this because they're saying inflation is falling. The percentage at which we are inflating is, is coming down. We are still under inflation or we're, it's increasing. Yeah. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? The fact that like most consumer prices are not reacting to this. Um, groceries are still ha have inflated less than food service because food service, you have a lot more labor. Mm -hmm. So people are eating out less. People are complaining about fast food getting expensive, but then you have California putting in $20 minimum wages. Mm -hmm. Like it's just hilarious. The, the, the political like 
jar like it's so stupid like they're gonna get the base of like low wage earners by saying we're gonna increase minimum wage and then because of that it's going to increase the prices of all the food that those people eat like it's it's mm. so stupid mm -hmm. like yes we're going to increase your minimum wage by 10 percent. fantastic but all of your food prices have gone up 20 percent. like mm -hmm. it just oh it it's so infuriating um just get the government out of all of this stuff. Let the free market do its thing and you will fight inflation so fast because technology is deflationary. Mm -hmm. And um, when you start bringing minimum wage stuff, when you start doing sort of all sorts of requirements around uh, immigration stuff, like it's just like, oh man, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is something that's interesting from the article and I'm summarizing a few paragraphs. I did read this beforehand, uh, but basically in the, in the note that it's making is that production of groceries. So actually just the distributors, the producers and the distributors of grocery items has actually um, stagnated, if not declined since the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. However, on average, looking at the large uh, grocery market brands, their profit margins are increasing. Mm -hmm. So how how do you feel about that? Should the government step in when like production and delivery? No, of make the, it easier for new entrants. Yeah. Like, because production and delivery of the items are like, hey, we've we got it figured out. Like we're stagnating. We're actually reducing costs. Like we're getting it figured out post COVID. But grocery stores are just, it sounds like, gro like here's production. Okay. We've stabilized and grocery stores are just like, let's just ride the inflationary wave. How do you feel about that? We have so many regulations for new entrants that no one competes with the big brands. Mm -hmm. So everyone cries about all these massive companies, but but then at the same time, wants their politician to put all sorts of regulation in place that prevents any sort of competition. Mm -hmm. So if you really want prices to come down, allow competition to come in. If you really want home prices to come down, allow people to build. Like if you want us to be able to wait five years to build a headquarters, why in the world would I do that? I'd go buy a building mm -hmm. and guess what's going to happen? There's going to be low supply and high demand, which means prices go through the roof. Mm -hmm. So how do you fix this? Increase supply, allow people to do work allow people to do their job, allow people to build things, allow people to start businesses. And by doing that, you will increase the supply and the cost will come down. But if you're going to create all sorts of regulation that make it impossible to start a business, you're never going to challenge the incumbent. And the incumbent is therefore the ability to be able to, that's why they spend so much money on lobbying is because if we can create regulations and a big book that prevents anyone from competing with us, and we're going to do it under the guise of safety, and we're going to do it under the guise of climate stuff and all this other garbage, prevent new entrants from coming into our sphere we will then have a monopoly mm -hmm. and everyone then like attacks them and then they say thank you for that that means we're the best yeah. <laughs> we're gonna take all this extra profit we're gonna funnel it into lobbying to prevent new entrants from coming into the market mm -hmm. and then what they do anyone that gets past that bar they just buy them out because mm -hmm. they have all the money mm -hmm. so then that's why you have these massive conglomerates like kroger and then like nestle nestle and you have uh uh, quaker oats like all these other companies or whatever it is the um these massive brands they just Anyone that gets through the initial inertia of like getting through marketplace, actually getting some sort of brand awareness, they just buy them out. Mm -hmm. And so then you get these massive conglomerates and they just literally spend a bunch of money preventing people from competing with them. Mm -hmm. And that should be, that should be regulated, mm -hmm. right? Just stop creating it, making it so hard for entrepreneurs and people that are small to get started. Mm -hmm. And then the, let, let the best, you know, let the best person win. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that that is one of the, how, how would I say this? I would say it's, you know, at, at, at a cost of capitalism, if you will. That because these big brands have been successful, they've created great products. Obviously, they wouldn't have this money if they did not have a good product and good branding. But now they've just basically demonized that by just sucking up every smaller brand. Yeah, like if, if you increase minimum wage, you are essentially going to increase the size and scope of the big players. They have the margin, they have the automation, they have the technology to eliminate a massive amount of labor. If you really want small mom and pop shops to exist, you would not increase minimum wage because the vast majority of their costs come from labor. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, a lot of the bigger companies can automate a lot of it. They can put, auto, like you are wiping out small town restaurants when you increase minimum wage. because. Mm -hmm a higher percentage of their revenue goes to labor. Whereas McDonald's has an automated payment system that took billions of dollars to create. Right. 
And so this is like when I look at lawn care, we're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like no one can can build the AI thing that we've built in right. hundreds of thousands of dollars building. Right. Right. So like, and then we will get the scope and the skies. We're doing exactly what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, no one will be able to break through the inertia because it's a matter of like, for example, grocery stores. They're going to go into the guys like the FDA and safety and like you need to have so many trucks that are like, you know, breathing oxygen mm -hmm. instead of fuel um, and all these other guises and the EPA to be able to keep people from being able to create a network like Walmart has of truckers and satellites. Like they have their own satellite system running all of their, their information stuff. Yeah. So you can't like you can't replicate it. It becomes a moat that you cannot take down. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we're literally trying to do ethical lawn care. It's so, like, let's all just, like, admit that. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, it's like, that should be allowed, in my opinion, and they should not be regulated. However, regulation around the small guy should be completely removed. And, like, keeping people suppressed by using legal, t legal things like minimum wage hikes blows my mind. Mm -hmm. So, everyone talks out of both sides of their mouth. Like, we want higher minimum wage, but we don't want inflation. All right, well, good luck with that. Yeah. Right? We don't want big companies to win, but we're going we're gonna to penalize every small business by raising minimum wage, and these guys have the money to automate. These people don't. Mm -hmm. Like, anyways, anytime you get the government involved with anything, it just <laughs> ruins everything. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, one thing that was interesting, I was- The government is built to keep us safe, have a, have a military, have law enforcement, and build bridges and roads. Yeah. They are not there, in my opinion, to govern how business should be operated. If someone's going to do something unsafe, the, the free market will not go to them. If people don't like cows dying, that company will not get leads. And they will end up having to change to plastic. Mm -hmm. It's the free market. Like, let us decide as consumers whether or not we want you know, our groceries to be transported in an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Let us determine whether or not we want to have organic or not. And don't put like minimum thresholds of how much needs to be organic and how much doesn't. Let us decide. Give us the full information. Mm -hmm. Anyways, sorry. No, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, w I was going to go on a tangent here. <laughs> Because uh, of what you're saying, you know, hey, when the government gets involved, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not good. Yeah. Well, this was something that I saw the other day that I thought was funny. Um, someone tweeted at Mark Cuban. Oh yeah, I, I saw, saw this. The 288 million dollar yeah, so tax someone bill. Someone tweeted at Mark Cuban. Hey Mark, just wondering if you or your corporations pay more than the required taxes in order to pay your fair share. Thanks so much. Yeah. And Mark Cuban replied, "I pay what I owe. Tomorrow I will wire transfer to the IRS 288 million." Uh, this country was done so much for me. I'm proud to pay my taxes every single year. Tag a former president that you know doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, two, I just thought... Two that, things I, th I th think about. <clears throat> One, he did just sell a big uh, stake of the Mavericks this yes. year. So I think he has a huge capital gains bill. I don't think 288 is like his standard threshold, by the way. Yeah. I think it's way less usually. Yeah. Um, secondly is this is why I think it's kind of funny when people like rat on billionaires. Mm -hmm. It's like they've played the system. They're advanced, like they've been privileged because of the system. Yes, that you are correct. And they have also paid 1,000 times as many taxes in this year as you will pay in your entire lifetime, let alone all of the, the payroll taxes they pay. Mm -hmm. Like the payroll taxes that he pays is probably just as much, if not more than that. Yeah. By telling you like, all of someone's employees, yeah. and then like, yes, they pay taxes, but then as an employer, you pay taxes on top of that. And the sales taxes they collected on all the products they've sold and so like the amount of taxes that a business owner pays when you actually add up like property taxes sales tax payroll tax and all this other stuff is, is exorbitant mm -hmm. and so yes these billionaires they have played the game and they have won and they have way too much money okay we can all agree on that do you want to pay 280 million dollars next year because <laughs> like if you actually break that down they're paying thousands of dollars per hour to live in the country mm -hmm. and they could just very well go down to a place like um, down in the, in, the, in the Maldives or in Spain, or they could go to someplace in Europe and pay no taxes or a flat tax at like $100,000 a year. And they decide to stay here and put $208 million back into the system. Yeah. So like, if you're going to complain about them making so much money, come up with the taxes. And yes, they have won and it is capitalistic and the vast majority of wealth goes to the big boys. Great. Become a big boy and pay a bunch of taxes. Yeah. The system's there. Yeah. Like if you want to go build it, you can. Yeah. And if you don't believe you can, and you don't, if you believe the system is rigged against you, then yes, for you, you are correct. It is rigged against you. Everything is horrible. You're never going to make it. You're right. 
But there's also people <laughs> like Mark that will come along and they'll get super lucky and sell their company for $6 billion when it was worth nothing, basically. In a matter of five years, it was like basically extinct. But they, yes, they played the rules, sorry. They played the <laughs> rules of the game. Yeah, totally. And like, you can win. Mm -hmm. And will it be easy? No. Like, there's all sorts of inertia and there's all sorts of entropy and gravity that you will have to fight through. But mm -hmm. like, if there is no regulation... Things like this happen. Yeah. Two hundred eight million dollars back into the economy, baby, yeah. to fuel the war in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the war in Israel and Iran. Now, yeah, actually. yeah, just about every other place yeah, in the world. Yeah, all of them. Oh, um, so this is from the the reason I bring this tweet up is well partly related to this kind of know, controversial episode. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, this is a newsletter I subscribe to, Sean Puri, the host of yeah, the My cool. First Million right, podcast. Yeah. This is his newsletter. So he does yeah. something called Twitter Tuesdays. Twitter Tuesdays. He takes his favorite tweets, he puts them in a okay. newsletter, and he adds his, his thoughts. Okay. This was his thought on the whole Mark Cuban tweet exchange. I never trust someone who brags about their civic duty. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually overcompensating for something. Also, <laughs> just to calculate, he sold the Mavs for $3.5 billion yep. and is paying $288 million in taxes. This is around a 12% tax rate. Shout out to Mark's accountant, the real hero here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. And then, and then like... And my, my, I agree. That's why I said, like, I guess the math thing is true. Yep. So, like, if, if he sold it, you got capital gains. But again, like, the 12% thing, it's capital gains. So, yes, it's a lower income bracket or tax bracket than, like, earning income, yeah. which would be at 30 to 40%. If you sell something, you don't pay nominal tax rates. Yeah. So, Sean <laughs> should probably actually take a book, like, a page out of the book. And that is, like, these are capital gains. Yeah, yeah. These are not income tax. Right. Very different. Yeah. So, Sean, you know, you got to learn the tax code. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but in general, it's like that sort of tweet, whatever he said there too, like is going to get a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. Cause like, again, 80% of people agree with what he just said, like only 12%. I had to pay 20% last year. Mm -hmm. And then they fail to realize that like the rules of the game are pretty straightforward. Capital gain tax and long-term capital gain tax, very different than income tax. And he's like, that's not fair. Well, we don't really want people buying things and selling them every 10 seconds. We need people to hold on to things and build businesses and employ people. Mm -hmm. So the government's like, we will, we will make sure that we balance out the economy where people don't flip things all the time. How will we do that? We have long-term capital gains and we have short-term capital gains. And the short-term capital gains will be significantly higher mm -hmm. because we don't want people uh, buying and flipping things, making our economy much more volatile. We don't want people to sell 90% of their stocks during a, a, a spike in fear because that will cause a to more taxable events. So what we will do, we will incentivize them to keep money in the market. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's, that's horrible. No, it's preventing people from massive layoffs and a huge amount of economic uncertainty. Anyways, I just think, I just think people look at things at the surface level and they're just like, they're not thinking about the downstream effects of this stuff. Yeah. And it, it looks good on Twitter to like rant about a billionaire only paying 12%. When it's like, yes, that is very close to the long-term capital gains rate. Minus all the depreciation and stuff that you can do and, and work into that, 12% sounds very reasonable. Mm -hmm. And $280 million is more taxes than Sean will ever pay in his life. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, that's fair. Yeah, but I, I'm not on Mark's side either because like, I do think it's weird to brag about paying taxes. It is weird. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like that at all. Like yeah. I pay taxes. I'm not going to like, show my IRS check that I'm sending in every single yeah, week. Yeah, it just, it feels weird. <laughs> it does feel weird. <laughs> but also Mark was responding to someone's comment. He did not like, voluntarily like put this on his thing agreed so you know anyways. but i mean replying to a no name on twitter when you're yeah a household name effectively yeah like, no, yeah, yeah. You're, you're trying to do something yeah you i don't, don't like, have to he probably gets yeah. mentioned what a couple hundred times a day on twitter like yeah he's, i think <laughs> if you're going to say that it's also like well then tell us what your income is yeah like if, if, if you sold the mavs and on paper you made five billion dollars last year we would like to know that yeah because yes you paid 208 million dollars you also took from the system four billion mm-hmm so, yeah, I don't think it's really like a, a good move. Like I would never share how much taxes I'm paying. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever do that. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I don't know. It's a weird ego strike. Yeah. I, I know. I'm like trying to see like, what was his point? I clearly, I think his point is to make a political shot at Trump. Tag a former yeah, president. Yeah, that was weird know. too. That's yeah. like, I feel like that's, he was like, I can get it there. I can get it there. And then he was like, I got it. Landed the plane, baby. <laughs> yeah, like I, if, if I was trying to make a point where this would be, again, I was a billionaire. I wouldn't, I would be okay with being like, I paid just like one liner. I paid $280 million last year to the IRS. 
that would make a little more sense. But when you like throw in like the jabs at presidents that don't pay yeah. and you throw in like other stuff uh, and like I pay what I owe and I'm giving back to my country. Yeah. Like he did not willingly give that $280 million. No. He did everything in his power to bring that number down. Yeah, 100%. You're not like willingly walking to the IRS like, please take my money. Yeah, it wasn't so a donation. It just feels very uh, altruistic. Yeah. It's your civic duty, but you also will literally go to jail if yeah. you don't do it. And you have an so army like of a, accountants preventing that number yeah. from being $350 million. Right. Like, you, you're not going to go to jail if you don't vote. Yeah. That's your civic duty. Yeah. Paying your taxes is like, it's your civic duty. Like, hand up. I do everything possible to reduce that number. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, that's that's all I got, unless you want to go into some not financial advice. Yeah, dude, go for it. All right. Well, I'll, I actually uh, I'm gonna change mine okay. since you since you brought up my phone case. Okay. So I've been uh, I've been on this brand for a long time. It's called Tech Twenty One. They are like the thinnest iPhone cases, okay. and I have never cracked a screen with these. Okay. I've been using this brand since high school. Tech okay. 21. Okay. So I've been using it for 10 years. Very cool. Super thin. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's very similar. Very thin. Oh, yeah, that's very, really thin. It's on the back end. Yeah. Very thin, cool. never cracked a screen. Yeah. But you don't have a yellow case, bro. I know. Like the yellow. I know, I know. I know. Is, <laughs> it's like when I get my luggage, I like I'm like sick. There's not really great yellow case like suitcases. Yeah. <laughs> and like mine always break because like they're not the best quality. But I also can't spend like eight hundred dollars on a, a tum tummy oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, suitcase. But it gotta be yellow, bro. Yeah. Gotta enough. be yellow. Yeah. Okay, my non financial advice. Um Okay, this is not really non financial advice. I was just gonna give out a rose for all the work that you've done the past three Three months. I was going to do this last time, and then you had this, like, really good comment for oh. non-financial. I was like, oh, I can't do it now. So I was just going to say thank you, to for all the work you've done in the past few Thanks, months. Sir. Worn a bunch of hats. Uh, really nothing, like, personally you've gotten out of it um, besides just, like, you know, love for the brand, love for myself, love for the owners. And um, I hope that down the road you get a lot of personal benefit from it uh, financially and things like that. But uh, this is the, the willingness to just jump in and do things without yeah. question. I appreciate it a lot. Of course, yeah. Happy to do it. The unsung heroes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's the pod. Cool. Let's go. <laughs>